doing this past weeks and, and months, and even from the beginning of the year, we've been talking about spiritual faith, the year of spiritual faith. And we've been really trying to be repetitious in some things, but bringing things new in other areas for our life. But the main challenge that we have to embark upon and consider, has this word begin to take effect upon your life? Are you allowing the word to direct, or are you just taking bits and pieces to suit your flesh, so to speak? The challenge for believers is that God knows what we're all about, each and every one of us individually, because he's the creator of us. And we've got to begin to understand and know his voice and no longer follow the stranger. It's been a challenge for a lot of us, I know, in some areas, but the main challenge is is allowing God to direct our path. Uh, 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 when do you know you're really growing in Christ or growing in the anointing? That's a good question. Sometimes you may not have a, what you may call a fleshly feeling, but you should have a spiritual feeling. You should be more at peace concerning your challenges or the people or the, or the things around you. You should begin, begin to view things a little differently. Your attitude towards things upon this world should be one wherein you don't carry any worries. Because you know you have someone who has your back, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, these are telltale signs of you beginning to rest in him, to allow him to direct your path, to allow the peace and pass of all understanding to begin to enter to your hearts as well as your mind through Christ Jesus. Uh, it, it takes me... Quickly, and it's not the main scripture, but it takes me over to 1 John. If you go with there with me, 1 John 4th chapter. I know we, 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 we preach this particular verse all the time, but I want it to begin to really resonate and just begin to soak into your spirit and let you know just what you have inside of you that should ignite the peace, should ignite the strength, to ignite allowing you to know not only who you are, but whose you are. Those that's important. Not only knowing who you are, but whose you are. You know, I can never really expound upon you beginning to find yourself from God's perspective. And I use that term, define yourself from God's perspective. You may see yourself totally different than God sees you. Some good, some bad. But the challenge is you have to be in sync. Let this mind be in you, the scripture said, that was also in Christ Jesus, the anointed Jesus. Open in the first John 4th chapter, drop down to the 4th verse. The word says, 4th chapter, 4th verse, it says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. What's them? The world, the challenges that the world presents. Anything that's not of God is of them. Because God said he came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. That's abundant life. That's a peaceful life. That's a joyful life. That's a life without pain, without suffering. That's a life with just the, with your mind being at peace no matter what's going on. It says, you are God, little children, have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Sometimes we forget that. No matter what the challenge is, there's something greater inside of us that has already overcame, that makes us overcomers of those challenges. No matter how many are being thrown our way, you have already came them because you have become an overcomer because Jesus has already paid the price for it. Not only the ones today, but the ones in the future. Sometimes we miss out not understanding that. If you take it back up on that verse, in that same chapter, verse 1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. In other words, that spiritual, that those spirits that still linger on there, you don't have to believe them. Though you see them, you don't have to receive them. Though you feel them, you don't have to receive them. And the challenge is when you allow things to enter in, you've received them. You've got to begin to say, 
pray and I say, Satan, I rebuke you. I rebuke that thought. Greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. That has to be your mantle. That has to be what you stand by. You have to trust and believe the word. Why? Because you're an overcomer. Because that situation has already been, was already overcame through the blood of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, this is the year of spiritual faith. It's important for us, as incumbents of that, to activate it and keep it activated in our individual lives. If not, your labor is in vain. I hate to say it that way, but that's what the truth is. That's why the suffering always seemed to uh, uh, reenact itself or reactivate itself in your life. Greater. See, you can suffer without suffering because you don't know you're suffering because you have so much peace in you, regardless of the situation. Turn, turn over to 2 Peter. Let, let me expound that. Keep, keep 1 John uh, uh, fourth chapter in your repertoire of scriptures. Every time you begin to feel bad, you have to begin to say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm not going to believe every spirit. I'm going to try that spirit and see if it's God. If it's not bringing peace, if it's not bringing joy, if it's not bringing victory, that's not of God. That's something to sidetrack me. That's the challenge. That's why we keep saying, guard your heart. Guard over in 2 Peter, first chapter, turn please to that epistle for me, please. And, and, and some of this stuff is repetitious, but we have to make sure this stuff is getting in. It has to get in to help build that foundation that you can walk in the spiritual faith which you're supposed to possess, which we all supposed to possess, which we all have inside of us. You know, when you became born again, old things passed away. What? Old fleshly things. And all things become new. It's the newness of life that was lost in the garden being restored back into your life from a spiritual perspective. That's what we're talking about here. That's what we're trying to expose. That's what we want to let you know what's inside of you. Open Second Peter, first chapter. Drop down to the third verse. I just want to confirm this with the scriptures here. It says... According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. God wants to be glorified through us. But he's given us the power. He's given us the power to possess that. To activate that. It says here, according to the divine power, have given unto us all things, all things pertaining unto life and godliness. Jesus said, I come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Not the way the world tries to give you, give it to you and try to take it back. I'm giving you that eternal life. I'm giving you that victorious life. I'm giving you that, that life that you could possess, have, and it not controlling you, but you controlling it through your faith in the word. Your trust in God. It says here in the fourth verse, Whoever are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine, scripture says, divine nature. Underline that in your Bible. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You know, your faith, your, your flesh always lusting after something. You know, I we, we just got to be just truthful about it. We're always, our flesh is always lusting up after something. Ladies, pair of shoes. You got the same color shoe, but you want a different style. Men, oh, you see the brother with that suit, you want the same suit, different style. And not that those things are bad, but your flesh always lusting after something. You can watch TV and wasn't think about eating. All of a sudden you see a commercial with some food on it. All of a sudden you're hungry for that right there. I was looking at a Hardy's bacon burger the other day on TV. Wasn't hungry and all of a sudden they had a lust. Boy, that looks good. Man, I want my... Your flesh always lusting after something. 
But the challenge is, God said he will supply your needs, not your wants, according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Your flesh have more wants than needs. Let's just, just, just note that. Your flesh has more, has more wants than needs. And the challenge is, God won't supply all your wants because some of those wants are not necessarily healthy spiritually or physically for your abundant life. Those are the things that were promised to you. God said he would supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. The separating of the two. It's not that God has failed you, but God has already stated in his word what will be provided through his promises. It says, but whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious, it says great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, something that won't take you away from God's spirit, from God's nature. It says here, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, through the fleshly lust. Verse 5 says, and besides this, even all diligent, add to your faith virtue, virtue, hmm. and virtue, not been there, done that. Been there, done that. That would take me this way. I don't want to go that way. Been there, done that. Why am I going to even pursue that when I know it would take me there? That's the knowledge of understanding. Where without that virtue, what would happen? It says, mm, verse 6, and to knowledge, temperance. Boy, I tell you what. That temperance, being temperamental is something else. We, it's another term we say, moody. You know, you know, that you have people, they're in the body of Christ and moody. Little stuff get to them. Have certain attitudes all the time. People walk by you and say, boy, that's a moody person. They can feel the spirit. They can feel you when you're off and on, when you're in and out. You know, it's moody. The moodiness that sometimes comes here, which shouldn't be there because you should be at peace. That should be a, a constant thing about you. That, 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 puts on the virtue of God, the divine nature of God, that people can see it being exhibited in your life. That's a challenge, brothers and sisters. We should be moody all the time. Little stuff shouldn't get us into off into a tantrum all the time. It says here, and beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience, godliness. Hmm. Verse 7, and to godliness, brotherly kindness. You know, everybody who loves you is not necessarily kind to you. And Jesus said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. You know, you, you may say, well, I love them. I show them loving. But if you're not kind to them, you won't draw them to your way. People desire people who are kind to them. Oh, you can love a person and still not be kind to them. Those are facts now. Those are facts. And we, and we understand that. And we got to realize that when scriptures and the scriptures say, Jesus says, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. Well, he laid out the parameters that you need to use to draw others in. Not only towards yourself, but to the body of Christ. That kindness is something else. You sometimes have to even be kind to those who would despitefully use you or who call themselves your enemy. Yes, kindness. Oh, yeah. Why, why, do I be kind? why do I have to be kind to them, Pastor? Because oh, the word said so. Well, I don't understand that part because it now it takes the power that they have over you by putting you in a moody stage just because you see them and give the power back to you to say, no matter, I know what these people are, I know what they're going to say, but you know, so I'm going to show them kindness anyway. That puts the power back in your hand. That situation no longer controls you. You're controlling it through God's virtuality of his nature. Oh, brothers, brothers and sisters. Verse 6 again. And to the knowledge temperance, and to the temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. How can you really uh, uh, exhibit brotherly kindness without first exhibiting love? It has to be present. That's what that charity means, love. And it's the love of God, that agape love, 
that has to supersede everything else. Not the fellatio uh, 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 type of love, you know, that, that, that we're talking about the agape love, the agape love of God. See, it's a challenge, brothers and sisters, because we're always challenged based on our walk with God. You're going to be challenged. Even today, you're probably being challenged later on today or were challenged yesterday. You know, somebody might have bumped into you and you looked at them, looked at them, and they looked at you strange and you want to say something, but that love of God should have came over you. Being a, even being apologetic, even when it wasn't your fault. That's the love of God. That's the kindness of God. It says here, look what it says in verse 8. For if these things be in you, underline this, if these things be in you, and the word here is abound. You know, they just can't be there. They, you know, they, they, they've got to circumvent all that other stuff that's been flowing, all that other stuff you've been allowed to really direct your life. It has to abound. It has to overcome. It has to be a part of your everyday life. And abound. They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, you won't be walking around in the wilderness. You have what you need when you need. You have more than enough. You have an overabundance right there. You won't be worried about stuff because because of these things that are exemplifying themselves in you, that are exhibiting themselves inside of you, they shall will allow you to abound in the victory that God has given you through his promises. That abundant life. He keep it coming to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. The peace that passes of all understanding, it now resides permanently with you. That no matter what you see, what you hear, it doesn't faze you because you know that God has your back. Because the scripture said, we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. Those are things that will get to bound you. It says here, verse 9. Well, let me finish verse 8. But these things be in you and abound. They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he, verse 9, but he that lack of these things is blind. Mm. But he that lack of these things is blind and cannot see afar off and have forgotten, the word says, oh goodness have forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. You know, we, sometimes we let like to reach back when we're angry. Oh, don't bring back the old me. Don't bring, why are you even discussing the old you? Old things should have passed away. Old things supposed to become new. Oh, don't make me go back in my old bag here. Those supposed to be passed away. The new you supposed to be abounding. The mere fact that you got to bring that up is like you haven't let it go. That you're ready to reach back as soon as something Tick you off. It's another word I want to use, but we don't have. Tick, we tick you off. It should be that way. Because now it says that thing still has control over you, whether you're controlling it through the virtualness, through the divine nature of God. Listen to me, brothers and sisters, to your spiritual faith. But he that lack of these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and have forgotten that he was purged, has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Verse 10, wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling. I'm born again, I'm saved. I'm part of the heads and not the tails. I'm above only, not beneath. Anything that I place my hands upon shall not shall prosper, that no good thing should be held back from it. See, that, 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 that's part of the newness. It says here, Wherefore, neither brethren give diligence and make your calling election sure, it says. For if we do these things, ye shall never fall. If you do these things, ye shall never fall. Do you feel like you've been falling? Maybe because you're not doing these things. Or if you haven't felt fail, 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 fail in a while, maybe because you begin to allow these things, knowingly, unbeknownly, to exhibit themselves in your life. God's word is true. Why I know that?
Ghost, God said he watches over his word to perform it. That's why I know it's true. And if these things are being exhibited inside of you, it's because God is watching over his word to make sure they're being performed in your life. Oh, brothers and sisters, that last verse says, for so, for so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They will be with you now and in the future. All because you're allowing these things to transpire, to take place, to have root, to have a place of residence in your life. It's always a challenge. But the Bible said, once you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. It's time to be free from the things of the world. Even though you're in it, the world says you're not of it. Begin to walk in the victory that you get from above. Last week we said that every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of light. For there is no darkness, brothers and sisters. Why? As we read earlier over in 1 John 4 and 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Begin to exhibit. Begin to magnify. Begin to allow these things to abound in you because that's why God sent his word. He said he sent his word to heal and to deliver. Deliver us from that old man. Not partially, but all the way. Heaven does not draw back, but move on. The Bible said we need to press on. Press on and press on towards the high calling state that's in Christ Jesus through the anointed Jesus. It takes the anointing to destroy the ill. Brothers and sisters, we have the victory. As we embark upon this Easter season, let's be reminded of what Christ came for and what he's also died for. What he took back for with him, that he what he had left hanging on the cross, that he went down into the deep to come back up to make us cleanse and clean from it no more. Oh, brothers and sisters, let not his labor, let not his labor be in vain in you. Oh, praise the Lord. I want to pray this morning. And I want to pray that. You allow your spirit to be lifted up. That you allow this word to begin to resonate even more on a day-to-day -day basis, on an hourly hour basis in your life. That you won't talk about it, that others will see it. As others see it, you will begin to feel it even more. I'm beginning to not only knowing, not only who you are, but whose you are. That's important. Why is that, Pastor? Because as a man think up in his heart, as a woman think up in his heart, in her heart, as a child think up in his heart, so is he. So is she. So is them. Oh, yes. It's a victory we can't overlook. It's a movement that has begun from the time that our Lord and Savior went down and came back up. It was a moment that was prepared from the beginning when God sent him into the world to save all of us. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Fathers, we come before you today. We want to thank you for your patience, for your love, and for your understanding towards all of us. There's sometimes, Father, we allowed our old man to rise back up. Sometimes we resurrected that person that supposed to have been gone, Father. But, Lord, through your word, you forgave us anyway. You knew it was going to happen because that's why you gave us 1 John 1 and 9. Your word said if we, if we just confess our sins, you will be faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father God, we thank you for taking care of us better than we could ever take care of ourselves. For loving us 
more than we can ever love ourselves. For the watching over us better than we can ever watch over ourselves. We thank you, Father. And we thank you for not giving up on us, Father. Because, Lord, each day, each week, you will set a reminder to let us know. A tidbit to remind us not only who we are, but whose we are. Oh, Father God, I thank you today. I thank you, Father God, for preserving, preserving, and, Father God, keeping us with that fresh anointing through your word. I thank you today, Father, for each and every person under the sound of my voice, be it conference call, be it Zoom, be it Facebook, be it YouTube. I thank you today, Father God, that your word of peace, your word of love, your word of an abundant life is reaching them right now. That you're touching their hearts based on the situation and the challenge that they may be going through right now, Father. Let them know, don't worry, cast it upon me. Because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oh, Father God, help us continually free ourselves from ourselves, Father. Knowing, Father God, that Jesus has already paid the price for each and everything that not only may be there, but is bound to come our way. Oh, Father, no matter what we're going through, we're trusting you. We're acknowledging you. We believe in you. And we thank you for the victory. We thank you for the victory that we have this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen. Amen.